What is up YouTube? So today I want to create this video and I got it on TikTok as a suggestion of how to get started with budgeting, with cash envelope stuffing, which I believe goes hand in hand. Kind of have to know where you are with your budget, income, expenses, all of those things before you can even touch cash. So the best way I know how to explain where to start with budgeting, what you need to look at is just starting from scratch. I'm going to set up my budgeting sheet with you guys, kind of tell you what I look for, what I jot down, all of those things, and that gives me a better idea of the cash I'm able to work with. If you want to see how to get started with budgeting and getting into cash envelope stuffing, then just keep on watching this video. I do have this whole layout created already. It is currently on my Etsy shop in this specific bullet journal, but all of the current bullet journals that I have do have this same exact budgeting layout. So I am using the GoodNotes app to use my journal, which is a separate purchase. The first thing I do when setting up my budget is look at when we are getting paid. Sorry if you guys can hear the fan noise in the background. Hopefully it's not too bad, but it is hot. Our first paycheck for the month of August is going to be August 5th. So it'll be the 5th and the 19th that we are to expect paychecks. This is my husband's paycheck and that is what I use to take out cash with, to pay bills and all of those things. I like to keep our income private. I unfortunately do not share that information, but I do share bill amount, debt amounts, all with you guys. For the budget section, you'll wanna put what you expect to come in the paycheck, and then actual is what you actually get. The next thing I fill in is our bills. It's nice to know your bills and your expenses. That could fluctuate your income. If you feel like you aren't making enough, to afford your lifestyle, to keep food on the table, to keep the lights on, then obviously you have to add income. So it's important to look at your bills and your variable expenses. Bills are also known as fixed expenses. They're just amounts that never change and you can guarantee expect them every month. Variable expenses are things that you need to buy like groceries putting gas in your car maybe you're more likely to eat out dine out for the month those kinds of things but those amounts can vary now it is raining so i hope all the sounds do not bother you guys i know our first bill is on the sixth a car payment and list all of your bills and the amounts like so I am going to put the total so I know for the month how much money we need for bills. Now let's go into our variable expenses. So there are six categories in my variable expenses, which are groceries, gas, dining, which is eating out, home for home supplies like toilet paper, dish soap, spending, and then giving. For the month, I budget $400 for groceries, $80 for gas, like I said, this is for the month, $80 for dining, $40. So I will be honest and say that sometimes we spend over the amount that we project, but most of the time we're able to stay close to the budget, how much we expect to pay for the month on variable expenses. If I were to total these two numbers together, 2451 plus 2451.49, which equals 231.31.49. My husband, if he makes above this amount for the month, we're in the clear. We're good. We're good to cover bills. We're good to cover variable expenses. If he makes a little bit higher than this amount, then obviously maybe we'll cut back on dining out or maybe we'll cut back on spending. If he makes less than this, I will have to get a job. We can cut costs, we can cut subscriptions. Knowing what your expenses are, maybe adjusting them to fit into your income or getting another source of income, they're just things that you have to consider. I will take out my cash envelope for you guys and just kind of talk about how we came to the amounts that we are at. For our bills and debt payments, we do all of that online. For cash, we do cash envelopes. 
and we also do sinking funds so if you follow me on tiktok you haven't seen maybe you have because i do have a video on this on my tiktok but i will be posting another video this thursday like what you should what you can do with it and all of those things so i don't explain it i just write it out and then it reads it for you how i came to these amounts for variable expenses and for sinking funds is that after all the bills are paid it's all kind of like you know you got to do one thing and then you do the other and then you do the other let's discuss cash envelopes how i came to my grocery amount actually just happened recently so my grocery amount has changed it was 160 for two weeks so that's 80 bucks a week i bumped it up to 240 because i noticed that we were going to the store a lot more and i actually overspent my budget so that's why i bumped it up to 240 i allowed it to be a tester run because for me 240 is a lot for groceries i went to costco and that actually helped a lot because we're coming into our second paycheck for july and you would think okay i'm gonna do 240 again for groceries but i don't have to because we still have food sorry about my daughter so i'm gonna bump the amount down to 160 because 240 is going to be too much it's going to vary you know variable expenses it'll vary but i have at least a range that i can work with it's trial and error it's just learning what works for you for gas we don't leave the house too much I am actually a stay-at-home mom. We also live in a small town, so a lot of things are close by. We don't have to drive far unless we go to Costco on the other side of the island. Dining, for me, this wasn't like an amount that works for us. This is an amount I want to stay within. We can definitely go overboard with dining out especially. It really helps to have it and to stick to it, to try to stick to it. It's not perfect, but it's ha it has helped us so far. For home, this is just for home supplies like toilet paper, dish soap, cleaning supplies. Obviously, I'm not buying all of my home supplies every time I go home shopping because obviously it's not needed. So anytime one thing runs out, which is not all at the same time, that is when I'll kind of replace it. So $20 is enough. Spending, I'd rather not have the category, but we do like to treat ourselves. Like we do like to go out for ice cream. This past month for my daughter's birthday, we went to watch a movie. Enjoying life, but not being like exaggerative about it. Giving, I'm thinking about turning this into a sinking fund envelope just because I'm trying to find ways to use it versus kind of letting it grow. But giving came to mind because we like to treat our friends whether we want to pay for their lunch or give them a gift or anything like that. So that's what that came from. But I think I am going to turn it into a sinking funds envelope because that would probably be a lot better. But yeah, so that's how we came to the amounts that we have. Hopefully that kind of helps you to kind of think of how you can decide your amounts. When we go into our sinking funds, like I said, I do have a TikTok video that will be up tomorrow kind of talking about this. We have car maintenance. Anytime the car breaks down, do an oil change, get new tires or anything like that, it can damage, you know, your savings or your budget for the month. So my goal for this amount is a thousand dollars. I decided on that amount because I felt like it was comfortable. So then how I know how much to put in per paycheck is I divide a thousand by however many paychecks I want to complete. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going in and out. I want to complete the envelope by. So for me, I want to complete it by August. Not by August, because we're not there yet. I want to complete it by October 31st. Obviously, that's in a couple months. So that is why we're putting in so much towards this envelope. If I were to have started at the beginning of the year, have still wanted to complete this envelope by October 31st, obviously, I'd have more months. And the amount that I put into this envelope could be way lower. We have car registration. We know it's going to come, so we are saving up money for it. We have an emergency fund. I personally would like to have cash on hand. And this is what that is. We have Christmas. Um, sometimes it's nice to not spend your hard-earned money within that paycheck towards Christmas presents because it can get expensive depending on how many kids you have, depending on how many gifts you want to buy, 
Um, we all have our own envelopes, so Booms, Ty, and me. Um, and in these, I have goals just to save 500 for each of them. Not for any specific kind of reason. I mean, obviously, mine is empty because um, I've been making purchases. It didn't feel right for me to make these purchases and still stuff my envelope. I should do the same with my husband because even though he's not physically with us here, he's in another state, he is still making purchases, sir. The two savings challenges that I'm doing, uh, saving mm, the two saving envelopes that I have, they're not really challenges. I have Boom's piggy bank and this envelope just gets all of the ones. So if I have any ones left over from my cash envelope stuffing, they go into Boom's piggy bank, just dollar bills. It could come out to $10. It's just all going into Boom's piggy bank as long as it's $1 bills. And then I have a $5 savings challenge. So what it is, is at the end of your cash envelope stuffing, if you still have $5, $5 bills, you put them in this envelope. I actually don't count this one. I don't want to. I just want to stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, and then count it at the end of the year and see where that envelope ends up. I don't have as much sinking funds as maybe other pages or other channels have purposely because we are focusing on paying down debt. When I say looking at numbers and looking at the whole picture is important, it not only is important for your income and your bills and all of that, but also if you have to make debt payments or if you want to pay debt down a lot quicker. That is basically how to get started. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. But you, you have to look at your numbers. You have to know what you're working with. And then you're able to decide the amounts that work for you but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if it helps you out or provides any clarity definitely let me know down below if you find it helpful just give it a thumbs up and then i'll try to create more videos like this if you want to keep up with me elsewhere i am on instagram and tiktok at modern twines if you haven't already please subscribe because that would mean so much to me i do appreciate you guys for being here and watching this video i don't think i have anything else to say thanks so much for tuning in and i will see you guys in my next one Thank you.